The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Earthly Podcast here, coming to you on a Saturday night. That's May 23rd, 2020. Um, and, um, <clears throat> I am back to commerce, if you heard the last episode, although, I must apologize, I didn't realize it until after the fact, when I published the episode, because I recorded, it was a mini, uh, recording I did in the car, um, and I thought, actually, it went, the audio went through, my microphone went through the, uh, my, my iPhone, um, Apple ear, ear uh, headphones, um, the mic attached to it, but apparently uh, it didn't go through because I, I left the phone on the on the, on the uh, seat, so most of the sound on the, on the ten minute episode was uh was hearing the car driving on the, on the way to work. So I apologize for that. For that, if you I, I left it up anyway, I, I, I considered taking it down, but it was still, there was still enough audio content there. Um, you have to cut through the noise. If you cut through the noise, you can hear. It. Obviously, if you, you, you you can skip through the episode if you, if, you, if, uh, if it annoys you. But I'll leave it up there. I'll leave the episode up there anyway. anyway. <clears throat> so yeah, it was a short 10 minute episode anyway. Basically, me returning to work yesterday. Um, and I did day two today, um, actually. Um, back to commerce, if you will. Um, again, day, two days in, weird. Obviously, weird because it's not the same as, as, it, as it's been. Um, lots of adjusting. Um, been there 17 years, so obviously, I, I, I have experience. Um, but, you know, our business is open, provided that we only have. 50% capacity max, and we've hit both, on both our days, we've hit the capacity we needed, or should I say that we were allowed um, at our, at my uh, at my job, I'm a poker dealer for that for that matter, so obviously, you know, tables and whenever we, we deal six-handed games and all that, um, so it's, it's been interesting, it's been somewhat, at least on my shifts anyway, it's been smooth, um, it's a lot of adjusting to be done, but I gotta tell you, I, it, it, you know, like I said, I there's parts of me that misses the ten weeks of being with my family and locked down and whatnot. I don't because I'm a bit of a I'm an extrovert, yes, but I am a hermit crab at home. I love being in my house. I love my I love being in my in my environment and all that. So it wasn't necessarily something that I hated. Now, yes, were there moments where I was like, yeah, I got the house, I got to do this, I got to kind of you know get the edge off a little bit. Yes, obviously, there's, a, there's a quite a few times that in the 10 weeks being locked down that I had those moments. But the, the majority the majority of it, for me, was actually a, a pause experience, honestly. Um, I was teasing, you know, I, I said this before, but I was teasing him, a friend of mine, you know, uh, yesterday that, you know, saying, you know, imagine if I went through this with uh, no kids. You know, I got a seven and three-year-old, so... Challenge there, of course. Been a lot more fun with <laughs> no kids, obviously, and, I'm, I'm, and I say that as someone who loves his sons to death. But I, it'd be even more enjoyable if they weren't, if they had to deal with the extra, you know, layer of homeschooling, um, behavior tantrums, um, all that. Entertaining your kids. It's, it's, I, I, sometimes I hate saying this too because I, I feel like I'm complaining about it, but I'm not complaining about it. I'm just getting the reality of the situation. Parenting is fun. It's not easy, but it's fun. It's fulfilling, you know? Um, but <clears throat> it's one of those things where, hey, it, you just do what you gotta do. So, but we're back to work now. Um, fun. It's kind of fun. It's, it's, it's cool. I'm blessed to have a job. Um, I'm blessed that I was called back. They didn't bring back all the dealers back. I was, I was on the on, on the list, so thank God for that. Um, but yeah, um, it, again, it, I, I hope it's what we're doing can sustain itself for a while because I mean I don't know when phase two phase two will start, and obviously phase two I believe we can go to seventy five percent capacity, which then opens the door for probably more dealers to come in more. Staff, more players, obviously, more commerce, um, which is good. Um, but so it's, it's, it's a lot to get used to. It's a lot, you know. I, I think I, I think I'm there for the most part. You know, I'm, I'm 
I can, you know, it's funny with me, like, I can really, I, I'm good at adjusting to things. You know, I don't like changes and whatnot all, all the time, but if, I, if I'm if i forced to adjust to a situation and it's out of my hands and I know I have to just either do it or don't do it, and if I don't do it, it's obviously, it's, it's not good. Um, but if I do it, and I, I tend to somehow adapt. I'm good at, I'm good at adapting. Um, so I, 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 this has been, so far, been a positive experience for me. Um, I mean, schedule's obviously going for my wife and I because she's working too also and right now we don't know what we're doing next week in terms of schedule so we've got to figure that out as, as time goes on but like I said, I'm, I'm glad that we're, we're both are back, glad to be back to work blessed to have jobs and good jobs in fact you know so there's that um, as for the rest of the, the country op- reopening every, every state I what I understand every state right now has, a, has already started some reopening phase some some sort of commerce back to commerce um, and again, I, I, I stand on the middle of the issue. I'm not, 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 that's not a cop out here. But I do stand in the middle of the issue. I do think we need to somehow get our minds back to commerce, back to, you know, working or not. We, 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 we don't want to lose people to, we, we don't want to keep losing people to poverty. We don't want to keep losing people to small businesses getting, getting destroyed because of this. We do need to make, take precaution and be very cautious of how we operate going forward. You know, it's, it's just sad that, even something like this is politicized. We can't even get bipartisan support on how to reopen fucking states and the country for crying out loud. Everything is all tattered into the partisan partisanship of, well, if I'm conservative on the right, I'm 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 all for just opening everything up right now, and that's it. And then on the left, I'm all for shutting things down and lockdown. And and though both things are wrong, both things, in my opinion, are too extreme and dumb and not smart. I'm sorry. So I'm I'm here to offend both sides right now, <laughs> um, but do we need to just get back to all reopening? Absolutely, but we need to be smart about it. That's all. And I I, I wish the common sense folks get more uh, should get more airtime, if you will. Um, so hold on, I got tea here. I'm gonna drink a quick. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm not really a coffee guy. Like I love small coffee, but not really taste them as much. I've always been a tea guy, and you can thank my grandmother, my late grandmother, uh, Teresa Thomasine, for uh, that. I, I, I'm still a tea guy. I tea with milk and sugar, brown sugar, you know. So, yes, that's me. That's how I am. That's what I'm into. Um, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm about doing the right thing in common sense, and. This, I mean, it's sad where we're at as a, as, a, as a people because everyone has their agendas. Everyone is a box into their into their, the political, you know, environment. And even something like this, we cannot come together on, you know. And uh, yeah, and yes, there's, there's corruption on top. So there's a lot of uh, you know, mistrust, and I get that, and and it, it applies it's apropos, but. We're talking about citizens here. We're talking about people, us as people, community, get together. You know. Um, so last week we concluded the last dance. Last Sunday, um, the last episodes came out. Um, I didn't. I actually didn't write a blog for the last episode. I, I, I be honest, I'll touch on it in a second about, about my writing frustration right now. But the last dance, uh, you know, obviously ended great. Um, they ended the 90, 98 season um, when Jordan beat the Jazz again in the conference final, uh, in the NBA finals rather. Um, now, my quick takeaways from the documentary is this. Honestly, I really didn't learn anything new. I experienced the majority of his career in, in, you know, in real time. You know, I became a basketball fan in 1989, 1990, shortly before his first ring. I was an obsessed NBA fan pretty much. I'm, I mean, I'm still am now, but especially in the 90s, I was an obsessed NBA fan. Um, so watching Jordan win six titles, you know, I saw all six NBA championship series. In real time, I, I know where I was for every single one of those two. Um, so I didn't really know anything new here about Jordan and whatnot. You know, the last dance really, in my opinion, really only confirmed everything I ever thought and heard about Michael Jordan. You know, he was an asshole. Okay, and now and now he pretty much confirmed that he let he 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 opened you know you know opened the gates for us. Look behind the curtain. And Michael Jordan, you know, the Michael Jordan that I was raised to to believe was a superhero, and, and he was, you know, to, to an extent, the superhuman Michael Jordan that we, us folks, cannot relate to because he's so out there. 
really was a, a guy who just had a chip on his shoulder. A guy who made me be bitter. A guy who might not be happy with his life. Who, who knows? But um, it confirmed thing I heard for years. Because we, we, we never, and we can never put our really, we can never really put our finger on it because he never really gave us fans, people, you know, appreciators a a uh, a peek through the curtain of who he really was. We saw the Hall of Fame season two, two thousand three, and certainly it was very stunning to hear that. But again, the Jordan I knew growing up before social media, you know whatnot, we didn't get a lot. Even if if there was bad going on. You really didn't know about it. Like the, gambling, the gambling things were there, yes, but at 13 years old, I it, it wasn't translating to me. I didn't care. He was still killing my teams on the he was still killing my teams on the court, <laughs> so it didn't matter. He was still crushing it. In fact, you can argue that the gambling stuff, the, the allegations, and all that, pushed him to be more of a uh, of an assassin, you know, because his best his best stretch of his career was around that time, in my opinion. So. Again, last dance confirmed thing I knew about about him. He was tough to play for, but he was a phenomenal player. He's the greatest of all time, obviously, in my opinion. Um, and uh, he wasn't perfect, you know. He wasn't perfect. Um, the the takeaways now too coming out of this now, especially is like both Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant. You know, two guys who played well. Pippen played on all six title teams, but Grant played the first three. Um, who was very important. I, I said this before when. We did the last dance breakdowns in the last couple, couple of weeks. You know, Horace Grant was very important to that team. Horace Grant was, was extremely important to the Bulls in the early 90s. Okay? But Pippen and Grant don't like how they're portrayed in this documentary. You know, Pippen, obviously, you know, they discuss, they go into details about the the year that Jordan retired in 94. They played, and the Bulls played the Knicks in the playoffs. Game three, they're down 0 2. Uh, I believe the Knicks were up in that game by, by points. Or two points, I'm not sure exactly, and then facing 0-3. Um, and I guess Phil Jackson draws up a play for, for Tony Kukoc, t- you know, um, to win the game, to tie the game, whatever. And Pippen didn't like it, and he and he went to the to the bench, pulled something, pulled something from the game, of course. And what's funny is Kukoc actually hit the shot, turned the series around, and made it competitive. They went up to seven games, lost in seven games, but they made it, made it a competitive series. And Jordan was not on that team at all, but yet they went into detail about that. That was a big. Uh, there was a big section about that, and I don't think P- Pippen didn't like how that was portrayed. Um, but again, when you when you do something as egregious as that, and you're supposed to be number one guy, there's no way in hell you're gonna let that down. No way in hell. Yeah, you, you have to expect to be expected to be to be spoken about at some at some degree. Now, obviously, because it's not gonna be about Michael Jordan, you know, you wouldn't think they would go die much into it, especially the fact that Jordan didn't play on that team. But there was still the influence there. He was still around to some degree. His spirit was still around there to some degree. Um, but it's funny, like, Pippen, in that moment, we realized Pippen's not really a, really a great number one guy, but Pippen might be the greatest number two guy in the history of the game, and he's probably still a top 20 player in, the, in all time because of that. It's funny how we look at that, like, they, you know, Jordan knew his role, Pippen knew his role, when when, when those two guys were together, it, it, it was perfect, it was magic. So, and Horace Grant is pissy because the fact that Michael Jordan, obviously, when he was, uh, rookie year, and he was talking about how, like, he, you know, how the first team he played on the 84, 85 was a mess. Half the team was on, was on, was doing weed, half the team was doing coke and all that, and whatnot, and he was pretty much snitching, you know, saying that without even an issue, and yet, he has an issue, George has an issue with Horace Grant allegedly snitching to Sam Smith, who has been on this podcast before, by the way, um, in the Jordan rules about what what was going on, how it was how it was tough to, tough to play with Michael Jordan. I, a lot of st- drama there, man. I mean, Michael. One thing was certain: Michael Jordan was not is, is still not well liked. By, well liked by a lot of people he's to play for. He's well liked by some, not by not not by all. And Horace Grant had a lot. Didn't didn't hold back. He had a lot to say. You know, uh, I wish I had the audio for that. But you know, but he had a lot to say. Um, it was. Pretty fascinating shit, you know. But all in all, doesn't change the fact that, change my, my, the fact that Jordan's the greatest of all time, in my opinion. Um, but again, it confirmed everything I thought for years. Everything, the Steve Kerr stuff that, that was confirmed. That did happen. Him punching Steve Kerr. Him getting fired. Bill Cartwright. You know, a lot of stuff. <sighs> I mean, it, it was definitely um, um, a lot to, to take in. And I'm sure a lot of the newer, the newer generation. 
you know, establish appreciation of how great he was. So, but all a great documentary. I'm gonna watch it again when it comes on Netflix or whatever it comes on. I'm gonna watch it in ten, all ten, you know, ten in whole one sitting, ten parts. So wait a whole week. <laughs> um, okay, Joe Rogan. <clears throat> now Joe Rogan made some news this week. By the way, I listened to Joe Rogan last night. His podcast it was the Dave Pacman. Um, fascinating stuff, by the way, if you check it out. Um, but Joe Rogan earlier this week uh, announced that he will be moving his show, The Joe Rogan Experience, exclusively to Spotify, beginning September 1st. Um, basically, Joe Rogan will now have all this stuff on that platform alone. Um, and it's, it's big news. Spotify has already, has already started cornering the market um, for exclusive podcasts. I spoke on the show weeks ago about how uh, The Ringer, Bill Simmons, they also moved to Spotify as well. Um, a few months back, and I said it was a big move because it was the entire Ringer platform. And if you know Bill Simmons and the Ringer, and how how much how much how how dedicated Bill Simmons is to the podcasting platform, he's one of the, he's one of the Godfathers of that. Um, Joe Rogan obviously is one of them too, but Bill Simmons especially one one of the, the Godfathers, the Podfathers, they call it um, of the of the podcasting platform. And uh, you know, and uh, you know, he took and, and the Ringer has. <laughs> Was it like 14, 12, 14 different shows alone on the platform, not including Bill Simmons' podcast? I mean, there's so many. It's a lot. I mean, I could be wrong on a number, but it's a lot of a lot of shows, a lot of podcast feeds, and all of that is gonna be is gonna be on the Ringer. I'm not sure if it'll be exclusive yet, but right now, because right now some of the shows are still on currently on Apple Podcasts. Um, but Joe Rogan is now, is now going exclusive now. Um, the deal, from what we heard, is a hundred million dollar deal. Um, it's a licensing deal too, which is great because Joe Rogan still gets the money and still gets to keep. Still gets to keep um, his uh, control of his content. He has carte blanche what he does, which is great. Um, and I thought about this too about Spotify. You know, because they they you know they don't lay bloom into the game for the most part. I mean, they, they they've been in existence since two thousand eight, two thousand nine, maybe maybe a little later than that um, in terms of the music streaming service and whatnot. But the fact they've been so aggressive on the podcasting thing is very encouraging. And I, I, I'm at you know I'm not really. As a consumer who doesn't want to pay for stuff really necessarily, like it, it parts of me is sad that Rogan's going. Although it's not really, it's not, it's not, it's still free to get the podcast. You still you have to pay for the podcast to get to Rogan. You just have to download the app, which what I do have, so not a big deal. Download Spotify app and you have access to the podcast. But I do admire the fact that Spotify is really is, is really believing in the medium. Really, really, really taking taking stock in the fact that podcasting is a big thing. And podcasting is real, and that you know, you know, the fact that they lock up Joe Budden. The fact you know Joe Budden's a obviously hip hop artist from two thousands, fairly big, um, but his show is even bigger. Um, Jamel Hill, one of the one of the more controversial, but one of the more um, bright minds in, in in media, sports media, liberal media, what we call it, you know. And then they have the ringer and Bill Simmons, whatnot. That's huge. And then now, now Joe Rogan, you know, I, 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 I firmly believe that the next guy probably on the list of, of being scooped up for exclusive rights is probably Mark Barron, WTF pod. You know, I can see that happening in the near future. But I appreciate that Spotify is doing this honestly because I, th- I think they believe they believe, they believe in the medium. And I do too. Um, what's disappointing is that Apple. Is behind the ball on this, among many things too. It's like ever since, ever since, ever since Steve Jobs died, feels like they're on the ball. They haven't, they haven't been innovative at all, and been behind the ball. Like they were supposed to get into, to be one of the leaders in the streaming services, and then they only now got into the streaming service, the Apple Plus uh, service, which is honestly, they have what five original shows. That's it. Um, they haven't done much there, not, not much of a, a, of a stamp there. They're right behind the ball on that one. Um, they haven't done much of the iPhones really. I mean, the, the, the recent iPhones, the camera's okay, but a lot of the, the technology not really, uh, uh, you know, cutting edge. They haven't done anything, any, anything new. Um, and then the podcasting thing, which is fascinating too, because when podcasts started back in the mid two thousands, you could really only get podcasts like to 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 uh, on an app to get a whole podcast. Most most of the podcasts that are being Third party platforms, they, 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 if I'm not mistaken, they were the first third party platform ex- that existed for podcasts. But they never found a way to monetize in a way where they can keep rights of, or exclusive rights to, to certain shows or make deals, whatever it may be. Meanwhile, you got Spotify who's doing it now. 
Luminary last year. Now, now I'm not sure how Luminary, Luminary is doing now, now these days because they they skipped a lot of shows last year, and I know a couple of shows defected after. Um, but other other companies are getting aggressive with this, you know. And Apple's just there, and and I get it, you know. It's still the the name still sells itself, but I don't know. I I admire what Spotify did here. I really admire that. I really do. Um, Apple, I mean, to me, is behind the ball on this, and it, it's just disappointing that in the last decade. Just in general, as a company, they haven't really been cutting edge. They haven't done anything really of significance, in my opinion, that makes you say, "Oh, okay." And it, whether it's streaming, whether it's you know what what their hardware, or software, and now the podcasting is it very disappointing. You you think Apple would have been ahead of the, ahead of the curve in that one, but no, no, not at all. But Joe Rogan going there, um, <clears throat> YouTube gets hit on this a little bit too because YouTube, well, you know, obviously you can, you can watch his shows on YouTube, so. The full episodes on YouTube will be now beyond Spotify's um, platform. Um, I believe the JRE clips, which is like pieces of the, of the episodes, will still be on YouTube, which is good. So I watched that too. For if, if there are guests he has on the show, I don't really care to listen to. Um, um, but there's, there's an important like five minute clip or ten minute clip on with that guest on something I might be interested in. I'll watch it on YouTube. You know, so but good for Joe Rogan, man. Good for him. Um, so I've been having some problems, <sighs> frustration lately with writing. I I I, I, I said this year, when his year started, I was going to commit to to uh, writing more. I, I went through a little couple of weeks of, of, of doing that. It was it was pretty decent. But now I'm kind of back, kind of back to my writer's block again. And I guess where I'm gonna, where I'm at now is that I'm not going to force it anymore. I'm not going to bother trying to force writing. If I if some comes to mind, I'll just write about it. You know, it's quite clear that I I probably enjoy podcast. Well, I will probably it is true. I do enjoy podcasting more than I do writing. Now, writing is the most fulfilling thing because I feel like when you when you're writing, as I said in the past, that when you're writing, you actually are with you have to be honest with yourself, and, and it's 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 more about it's more being vulnerable in the moment for yourself. But I know it's it's, it's been tough lately. Just 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 trying to uh, you know, get on a roll. You know, so I I guess I'm I I decided today is like you know I, I I'm not gonna force anymore. Like if I if I get an idea, I'll write about it. But I'm not gonna sit and force it. Obviously, the, the the thing I I really push the most is the podcast stuff. So I, I I'll I'll still write, and if it's an article to write about, I write I'll write a, a piece or a blog whatever about, about something that's important. But otherwise, I'm not gonna you know continue forcing anymore. That's all. Um, let me see what else here before we go. Uh, finally, um, not about to work, but I did manage to get some binging in order, some TV shows, some movies here and there. I, look, I in the, in the ten weeks I was I, I was on, on uh, off a lot of work. Disappointing to say the least about my binging. Obviously, did, did finally see the Joker though, the movie, the Joker movie, which is I, I, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, performance by uh, Joaquin Phoenix in there. Deserved the awards that he got for that, the Oscars. Uh, very disturbing, obviously too. Um, I don't think Neopart two for that movie. To be honest, with you. I think that, that that's good. What they did there is good enough. Yeah, we, we we know the story beyond when Thomas Wayne dies and gets murdered. We know the story beyond that. You know how that goes with Bruce Wayne and you know Alfred or racing all that. We don't, we don't need a part two of Joker, honestly. Um, I said I started Better Call Saul um a few weeks back. I'm still in season two. Um, we cut off some ground on that a little bit because um, now we're back to work and all that. But hopefully we can, we'll get back to the ground on that one. We'll see what happens. Um, I started um, uh, a documentary also on the Lakers, on the Kobe Shaq Lakers, that was on Spectrum. That my uh, our, our friend the pod, Mark Francois, recommended me to watch. He gave me his login on his on his, on his account to watch it for a parter. I finished part one. It's, it's focused on the 1999-2000 Lakers um, um, documentary, and it, it's kind of cool because like because it, it, it kind of sort of coincides with the line. That has nothing to do with each other, obviously, but it does coincide with the last dance and Phil Jackson more than anything else. The bridging from him going to Chicago and going to LA. So, some given what we've been watching on the ESPN the last you know month and a half, it's kind of cool. Um, also, I've been catching up on the wrestling documentaries, Dark Side of the Ring. Um, I did not see the Owen Hart episodes yet. I did watch. I did watch um, the, the Jimmy Snuka one last week. That was really really good. Um, I watched. Um, the Brawl for All one, which is very fascinating, um, which, I, which I actually forgot about. Like, I knew, I kept hearing about it for a long time, but I didn't know what it meant. But it, it's funny, because I was watching it wrestling at the time, but I, I feel like I may, I may have missed the Brawl for All stuff. But the Brawl for All material um, on there as well, um, which was uh, really good stuff, um, really good um, um, documentary about, you know, pe- uh, you know, story about the, you know, wrestlers that started boxing and 
probably pretty much the short some careers there too. Um, what else did I watch? I watched the Brawl for All one. I watched the Jimmy Snooker one, and oh, Dino Bravo. I watched the Dino Bravo episode two. That was that, that was actually really that's the one I'm looking forward to the most, really, honest, of the season because Dino Bravo was more my era, Hulkamania era, um, and you know him getting assassinated for you know he was doing some you know shipping illegal cigarettes and all that, and I guess what what happened and he got murdered and all that. So, but yeah, that's that's been my latest business lately. Um, and I've been trying to stay up with wrestling. I'm, I'm AEW. I'm, I'm still caught up on. It's, it, everything else has been kind of haywire. So, but I'm, again, I'm trying to adjust to life now. I'm back to work after ten weeks. So we'll see what happens there. But okay, that'll do for now. Um, Earth Week podcast. Um, again, May twenty third, two thousand twenty. Um, um, I guess my blog earthchristian.com, dot com, uh, Twitter easychristian seven, and I guess till the next episode we'll talk soon. Love you guys. Stay continue to stay safe, stay up, and be cautious and know your surroundings. Yeah. So, so then later.